Hey guys, it's Larissa. I'm going to read Philippians chapter 4 today. Give you some thoughts. Don't take my word for anything I say. Make sure you're reading the Bible yourself, praying, and getting discernment from the Holy Spirit. I'm not a teacher. I'm just Larissa reading the Bible. Okay. Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Stand fast in the Spirit of the Lord, my joy and crown. I consider you to be joy whenever I think of you you bring me joy and I feel like I'm receiving the crown at the end of a race you know like the little wreaths they would give them on their head <clears throat> and he's longing for them he loves them and he's missing them dearly I implore Udea and I implore Sintiki, Sintiki sorry to be of the same mind in the Lord I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So Udea and Sintiki are not getting along. They're having disputes and making dissensions in the church. So he says, I urge you, true companion, and with Clement to help them and the fellow everybody else in the church help them be reconciled help them get along help them have the same mind and true companion here is translated from the the name Sinzigus so the name Sinzigus is probably a person who he's asking to help and it was translated into true companion because that's the the transliteration of that name okay Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. So always rejoice, no matter what your circumstances are. Rejoice in the character of God. Know that he is able and he is good always. So even if you're having a bad day or a bad situation, rejoice. Most of the time, whenever you start praising God, things will start looking up. You'll start seeing all of the good that you do have instead of looking at your circumstances look to God okay <laughs> let your gentleness be known be known to all men the Lord is at hand the Lord is near let your graciousness let your forbearance let let everyone see that you're holding on to the Lord because you know he's coming soon be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God supplications are prayers but it's not just praying and it's not repetitive well it could be repetitive but it's not a bunch of words to make it sound all fancy it's literally means this is my prayer this is what I need I'm giving it to you I'm handing my worries to you Lord only you can help me I can't help myself nobody else can help me I'm laying it at your feet and I'm giving it to you, and I'm going to trust that you are going to help me with it. That, that's it. Nobody else can help me but you, God. So here it is. This is for you to help me with because you're sovereign. You're powerful. You're wonderful. You can do anything, and I need your help. So you just give God that prayer, that, that request, and he will help you. It says, be anxious for nothing. But by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, always rejoicing, always being thankful, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. By fully transferring all of your needs and your burdens into the hands of God, you're casting your cares upon him because he cares for you. And then the peace that comes, the peace comes because you know he's going to take care of you. The peace that surpasses all understanding is his peace. Um, sorry, I'm going to go to John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus leaves his peace with us. He gives us his peace. It's not the world's peace. It's a peace that 
others can understand and it's sometimes we can't understand how we can have such a crazy circumstance going on and we have this peace about us that we're not moved we're not shaken it's because it's god's peace it's not the world's peace it's god's peace and jesus will guard our hearts with his peace and it'll surpass all understanding finally brethren Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Jesus is the God of peace. We are to meditate on all these good things, not on the bad things. You don't, and it's easier said than done, looking at your circumstances thinking, I don't have this, I need this, this happened, I need this, I can't believe this is the, 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 the. look at what you have and don't look at what you don't have. Look at what you can be grateful for. <clears throat> look at the love of God that he's given to you. Look at what Jesus did on that cross for you. How he died for you. How he took your sins. And now you can be in right standing with God because of him. How, And you can also look at people that have less than you. You can always look at people that are suffering, need, and want. Instead of wanting and needing all the time. Because it'll put perspective in your eyes when you see others that are satisfied with what they have instead of always wanting more, which is a lot of people's mindsets these days. Try to look at what others don't have compared to your abundance. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit. Anyways, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again though you surely did care but you lacked opportunity not that i speak in regard of need for i have learned in whatever state i am to be content i know how to be abased and i know how to abound everywhere in all things i have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need i can do all things through christ who strengthens me Paul is saying, I am so happy that your care for me has flourished. Not that you, you don't care. It's not that you're, I'm so glad that you're able to give to me. Not that you haven't been wanting to give to me, but you have lacked opportunity. You haven't been able to. You've been lacking. Not that I speak of wanting or needing I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. He's learned to be content. He's learned to be happy with the clothes on his back and the, the food in his hand. Second, or First Timothy um, chapter 6, it says, chapter 6, verse 7, for for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. Be content with what you have. He says, I know how to be abased, to be in want. I know how to be, I know how to abound, to be with plenty. Everywhere in all things I have learned. I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not by his doing that he's being content. He can't be content on his own. Nobody can be content on their own. There's always the flesh that gets in the way. You have to submit under Christ and God will surpass all understanding 
Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace which pass, surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus. Your mind is always going to be like, oh, I'm in jail. <clears throat> I'm in jail, and I barely have a rag to cover me, and I don't have any food today, and I guess I'm not going to eat, and oh, poor me, poor me, poor me. Paul is saying, I'm so glad that you guys can give to me right now. I know that you've lacked but now that you're giving to me, it's awesome because I know that God's going to supply whatever I need. And I can be hungry because I know that he's with me. I can be without clothing because I know that he's with me. Remember, he was in a Roman prison. They didn't care about him. They didn't feed him. They didn't clothe him. He probably was sleeping on a hard floor, maybe some straw. So he's saying, Everywhere in all things I have learned to be full and hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That doesn't mean I can go run a race and I can win first prize and get that thousand dollars I've been wanting, but not really needing, but I really want it. I really want to get that the the pride my pride lifted up by winning first prize like it's not saying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For your selfish needs it's saying for his will whatever his will is I can do it I can do all things through his through Christ who strengthens me for his will nevertheless you have done well that you shared in my distress now you Philippians know that sorry now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, which is the Philippians, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberty. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. So, and not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. Not of their abundance, not of their, they are so rich that they can just give, says their deep poverty, their great affliction. They were in a trial of affliction. They had no money, but in their joy, they gave and that's where the god loves a cheerful give, giver comes in which is in chapter 9 of second corinthians and people use that to say oh if you give to the church or you give to this this thing that god's gonna give you back double that's not that's not what it means he loves somebody that is willing to give out of their their lack to help somebody that's lacking more than them. Paul was in jail and the Philippians having a lack, being in poverty themselves, gave what they could. They scrounged up whatever they could get and gave it to Paul, which was probably just some food and some clothing. They, they gave cheerfully from their joy and their love from Jesus and by the will of God not not hoping to receive anything in return just knowing that they were doing the will of God and they were cheerfully giving out of their love out of their joy for Paul and for the ministry of Jesus Christ okay for even in Thessal Thessalonica you sent aid once and again for my necessities you see, they, they even gave it whenever he was in Thessalonica. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. The fruit, the love, the joy, the fruit of the Spirit that 
is coming from Christ working in you. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Ephroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma and an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. That sounds like the Old Testament whenever God would get the sacrifices to, whenever they would sacrifice an animal, it would be a sweet-smelling aroma to the Lord. They're sacrificing from their lack out of joy to help somebody in need is a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord. He says, I don't require, I don't want sacrifice, but, oh my gosh, I lost that scripture as soon as I had it. Anyways, I'll think of it in a minute. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing? 28. So why do you worry about your clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient is the day for its own trouble. Mercy. Sorry, it just popped in my head. I, I, don't, I don't want sacrifice. I want mercy. They were given mercy. They were given a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord by showing mercy on Paul out of their lack, just like the widow. People use that scripture in churches and buildings to get people to give even when they don't have anything. And he's saying, look, she didn't have anything. And she gave her last two mites. And then before that, he was talking about how they devour widows' houses. And that's how they would devour widows' houses, by taking everything they had. Instead of helping the poor like they were supposed to, they were taking from the poor. Now, God requires mercy, not sacrifice. And here, it's a sweet-smelling aroma to the Lord for them to sacrifice out of their need to help somebody else more needy than them. Okay, I have got way off and went all over the place. But Jesus says, do not worry because God will supply all that you need when you need it, especially when you're helping someone more needy than you. And you should be satisfied with everything that you have. Be content, but you can't be content on your own. So you have to rely on Jesus for those things and the peace that surpasses all understanding when you've made your request when you've when you've laid your burden down at Christ's feet and say this is too hard for me you say take my yoke upon me take your yoke take my yoke upon you for my my burden is easy and my load is light so i need you to take my burden lord because you'll make everything lighter on me you'll help me overcome all these situations man it just got all kinds of flipped flopped in there okay Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All of the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, he always ends with greet everyone. And then he says, the people who are with me greet you. And the saints greet you. But especially those who are of Caesar's household. Caesar Nero, 
the one that would take Christians and put them on stakes and burn them to light his garden at night, that Caesar had people in his household believing on Jesus because Paul was in chains. Okay, well, that is chapter four of Philippians. I'm going to get off here, and I hope you guys have a great day. All right, thanks. Bye.